This is chapter 13 then, the integration chapter, challenge questions. If you know product rule, go ahead and be fancy. Otherwise, just expand this out. I think I simplified this first to make it 3x to the minus 5 plus x to the minus 4. And then I expanded out. Of course, change that to an x to the half as well. So you can just start adding powers together when you expand. Make sure you do all of the cross terms and stuff. You eventually get this. Now we need to integrate this, of course, because if we're finding y equals, you differentiate this way and integrate this way. So integrate all of these things. Just add 1 to all of these powers here. Of course, if they're already negative, then you essentially get close to 0. It feels a bit like taking away 1. But in any case, and then divide by the new powers. You eventually got this. Don't forget the plus C. And you're pretty much done there. Uh, next one is an interesting one. So you get this kind of recurrence relation of this. And you're given the first one. So F1 of X is this. Now, that means that F dash 2 of X is F1 of X. So F dash 2 of X is just X squared. Uh, we can integrate both sides of this to get F2 of X is X cubed over 3. Um, plus C except every curve passes the or through the origin, so all the plus c's are going to be 0. We can do that again, so therefore f dash 3 of x is f2 of x, which is this, and we'll just integrate that to make a sixth, no, sorry, a twelfth of x to the 4. Again, the plus c is 0, and I think that's that. It's just an expression for this, so let's look at these two really hard and try and figure out an expression here. Clearly the power is just n plus 1. Now, what about this thing here? How do we get 2 to be a 3 and 3 to be a 12? Well, there's clearly some kind of factorial-ish kind of behavior going on, because the next one you raise this to a 5, divide by 5, and it's kind of 3 times 4 times 5 would be the next one. So it's a bit like a factorial, except 2 is missing. You, you never actually times by 2, because you're starting here. You've never actually divided by 2 to get there. So I sort of think it's just n plus 1 factorial divided by 2, uh, with the power, as I mentioned here. Of course, the 1 over is just always 1 over. I think that's a pretty good suggestion. Part 2 is, is, is basically the same, except the C is going to be 1 every time. So let's do the same thing. So we're going to start, and uh, also we start here instead. So we start with F dash 2 of X is 1. You integrate both sides, and like I said, the C is going to be 1 every time that we do this. And then we do it again for F of 3. So we integrate this thing we just found to make X squared over 2 plus X, again with a plus 1 on the end, because... Um, C is always 1, and then we just do it one more time, integrate this thing and stick a plus 1 on the end when you do, and you'll eventually end up with X, F4 of X is that thing there. Question 3 then, so this is a very standard exam question, not sure why it's in the challenge section. You just integrate this thing, of course you can write this as 3, 8, 3X, three or 3 8 X plus a quarter if you want to. You could even just remove the 8th and put it at the front here, which in hindsight I absolutely should have done. You're told this equals 7, so the idea is to just integrate this, Put the k's in, as I'm about to hit, and then that equals 7, apparently. Um, so put the k's in, do a bunch of simplifying, which is all fairly logical, and then you just say that all it has to equal 7. And now we solve this equation here. Um, so I guess we can uh, double everything to make all of the, the stuff nice. Move the 17, move the 14, sorry, over. That factorizes, I would imagine, to make k is either 2 or minus 7 thirds. But you're told k is greater than 0, so therefore it's k equals 2. Next one, we're going to draw this curve first and actually integrate it. So this has roots at 0 and 3. And this is an upside down quadratic because it expands to 3x minus x squared. So it looks a bit like this. Let's find this area here by actually just doing the integral, which is going to turn out like this. When you put in zeros, it's really nice, right? It draw just goes away. So we just need to put the 3s in and we end up with that, which I think equals eventually that. Um, so, okay, the, the original integral is 9 over 2. If you... This we just got to think about what the graph transformations do. If you put a 2 in front of the f of x, that stretches it out vertically to be twice as big. Now, that doesn't actually end up mattering, because all you really need to know is that we're integrating 2 f of x. And like I said with the one before, when you could just take the 8 out, you could, integration doesn't care about constants. You can just take the 2 out. And we already know that the integral between 0 and 3 of f of x is 9 over 2. So this is just 9 over 2 times 2, which is 9. And likewise here, right? You can just take the a out. You know that this is 9 over 2, and then you just times it by a to get 9 a over 2. I'm not sure. Yeah, 9 a, 9 a over 2 is obviously the answer to that. I'm just, I just copy-pasted this and didn't bother to, yeah. Cool. D and E are slightly more interesting, right? So for D, you're moving this thing left A units. But, of course, that doesn't actually matter. It's the integral, right? Because the integral is just this area above the x-axis here. The integral, that area is not changing when you move it left and right. So that answer is still 9 over 2. And then this one here, 
you're squashing the graph factor A towards the y-axis. So squashing this original graph towards the y-axis like this. And the root is going to be 3 squashed down to 3 over A. Now, you could just assume that this just divides the area by A. And that assumption ends up being correct. Uh, you could also just integrate the thing, replacing X's with AX's and integrating up to 3 over A to verify that it does indeed make uh, 9 over 2A. You just divide the original area by A. And you do. So that's good to verify that that's true. Next bit, so we've got roots at 1 and minus 2, so that must be minus 2 there, and that must be 1 there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say integral from a to 1 is equal to 0 of uh, this uh, this function here, which I've expanded out there. And I'll, I'll, this is lazy notation, but I've used x here to represent the x-coordinate of a. I know that's not good notation for me, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, you, exp you can obviously integrate this to x4 over 4 plus x3 over 3 minus x squared and put in 1 and put in x, and you're aiming to make 0 to make these areas cancel out, obviously, because integrals uh, consider this area to be negative and this one to be positive, so we're trying to cancel them to make 0. Now, this makes a cortic that you eventually, uh, times over by 12 here, eventually you make this cortic here. Now, how are we going to go about solving that in, in a actually sensible way? Well, what we can deduce, we can either just sort of use the factor theorem, or you can also deduce that if you set this x to be 1, Clearly, the answer is zero because, I mean, essentially, you're integrating between here and here, this point here and its own point, which is obviously an area of zero. Um, but yeah, so if you made x1, one is definitely the answer to this cortex. So just, just factorize out at x minus one. Now, x times 3x cubed is clearly 3x to the four, and minus one times minus five is clearly plus five. I'm, I'm doing this to avoid polynomial division, obviously, because I despise it. What I'm just going to do is literally just figure out what the other things need to be because for example if i'm aiming to make zero x's right now i've got minus five x's so i need to put some x's in here to make minus one times that balance those x's out so i also need minus five x there because minus five x's plus five x's makes no x's and there's no other way to make x's because all the other x terms are going to be too big so that's that's going to be that and then to make the four x cubes well right now i've got minus three x cubes so I think I'm going to need a plus 7x squared here to make um, x times 7x squared make a plus 4x cubed. And this all works. And now, again, factor theorem, it's kind of clearly factor theorem shows me that 1 is a root again. Of course, the way that they've arranged this is super nice because it tells me 1 is going to be another root. So, okay, we can just pull that out and do the same trick. So um, this is going to make a plus 1 this time. So plus 1 times uh, plus 5 will give me this plus 5 that I need eventually over here. And you can do the same thing I just did, or you can just look at this and go, okay, well, plus 10x, just black it. Just say that clearly I understand it's going to be that, and I'm good to go. We have a bunch of solutions here. We have the solution x equals 1, as I talked about. And then we have the solution to this quadratic, which we can just use formula for. It ends up being this thing here. Now, minus 10 minus root 40 is over 6. is some big negative number over here somewhere. So minus 10 plus root 40, well, root 40 is about 6. So that makes about minus 4 so over 6 is, is, is less than minus 2. So or it's closer to 0 than minus 2. So that will be the A coordinate there. Um, now, this coordinate with the negative root 40 is way over here because if you do all of this area plus all of this area plus another negative area down here, that would all balance to make 0, which is essentially all that I asked to start with. So the minus 10 minus root 40 represents a solution over here where this, this, and this all cancel. The ones, of course, represent the trivial solution here, and this one represents this A here. So I think that's all of that question done. And the last question in this video, I need to um, firstly find these two coordinates. Obviously, this is zero, but anyway, put this equal to that. Uh, double everything, I guess. No, not even that. Just move these things over, cancel out the sevens, then double everything, factorize, solutions at zero and five. So, okay, if I just integrate this curve between 0 and 5 and take away the integral of this curve between 0 and 5, I think I'll get the answer. When you're taking away two integrals between the same bounds, you can just mash the integrals together. So just do this minus this to make minus half x, whereas this minus this and this minus this cancels again. So you end up with this. Do the integral. When you put in 0, nothing happens. That's great. Just put in 5. Put it in the calculator, I guess, and you get this here as your answer. That was the entire integral chapter. I'll see you next time.